The world famous singer Meatloaf has just stepped into eternity. But in his life, this rock star famously said three things about God and hell. Before we look at number one, I just want to stop for a minute and remind you all that this is a man who was made in the image of God. And right now, we need to pray for Meatloaf's family that the God of comfort will draw close to them and reveal himself to them during this difficult time. Okay, number one, Meatloaf famously said, Got to be damned, you know I want to be damned. He also said, And I would do anything for love. I'd run right into hell and back. When I was a teenager, I used to love Meatloaf's music. And when you listen to his songs, you can sort of hear that he has a sort of fascination with darkness and hell. A hundred years ago, you would never catch someone say, I want to be damned. But today, very sadly, there are many people like Meatloaf who say, I want to go to hell. Some people even say, hell is going to be one great big party. All the greatest celebrities are there. All the greatest musicians, the greatest artists. Oh, when we get to hell, we'll just have one big big party with the devil and his demons. It will be so much fun. But, do you want to hear something scary? God will actually respect your free will. And if you spend the rest of your life saying, I want nothing to do with you, God. I want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. God will say, that's fine. I respect your free will. Spend eternity apart from me. You see, for love to be true, for it to be real, for it to be authentic, it has to be totally free. And likewise, you can choose to love God or you can choose to reject him. God is a gentleman. He will not force himself on anyone. And if you say for all of your life, I don't want you, God, God will say, that's fine. Spend eternity apart from me in a place where my love is not present. Come on guys, we've all seen the cartoons with those red little creatures running around with pitchforks, but that isn't what hell is like. Yes, there is a lake of fire there, but hell is actually more the opposite of who God is. You see, because God is light, in hell it will be a place of gloomy darkness. Because God is hope, the residents of hell have no hope. Because God is peace, those who spend eternity in hell will never ever find rest. And because God is life, in hell there is no life. That's why it's called the second death. Oh my dear friend, whoever you are, wherever you're watching this right now, go anywhere, but do not go to hell. Number two, Meatloaf used to sing, Some days I pray to the God of S-E-X, and drums and rock and roll. Now I wonder, what God do you think Meatloaf has been praying to? Some of you will want me to answer the question, is Meatloaf in heaven or hell? And I want to tell you right now, as a sinful man, I am not capable of answering that question. Only God knows what happens to a man or woman in their final moments of life. When that life is ebbing away, only God knows whether that person has come to Christ or not. But if a person does reject Christ, for all of their life, right up until their last breath, we do know they will not make it to heaven. But let me share with you a story of hope. One of my best friend's dads was dying, and my friend was very concerned because he knew that his dad had not yet put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when his father was lying on his deathbed, he knew if he went up to his father and started sharing the gospel, his brothers and sisters would be very angry at him, saying, how dare you preach to him? Just let him rest, let him have some peace. And my friend said he had to come to the point where he had to ask himself this question. In a million years time, will it matter if my brothers and sisters are angry at me? No. But in a million years time, it will matter where my father is spending eternity. So he bit the bullet and he sat down next to his father and he shared the gospel with him. Anyway, a few days later, his father died. And my friend was still very concerned. He didn't know for sure. He didn't know how his father had responded to the gospel. So he prayed to God and he said, Lord God, would you give me a sign? Would you give me some kind of reassurance? Because I've just got to know where my dad is right now. Anyway, one night he was driving his car and he received a phone call from his brother. And his brother said, you know, when dad died, something kind of disturbed me. There was a sort of presence as if there was other people in the room. And my friend knew within an instance what had happened. Jesus tells a parable about where a man of God, Lazarus, goes to heaven and it says in that parable that the angels carried him to Abraham's side and my friend knew that the angels had come 
and carried his dad to the Lord's side. Guys, I don't want to give you a false hope for all of your loved ones, but the Bible does say this, my word will not return to me void, or it will not return to me empty. And in those final moments of life, when a person's life is failing, you do not know what verses might come to their minds. That time when you shared the gospel with them, that time when you read a Bible verse to them, you just don't know what God can do in those final moments. And I do believe there will be many surprises when we get to heaven. But I myself would be angry if I did not ask you this question. What God are you praying to? Are you praying to the God of the Bible, the God who created the universe? Or are you praying to another God? Are you worshipping another God? Because everyone worships something. If you go right down into the deep jungles of Papua New Guinea, you'll find a tribe there and they might be worshipping some kind of river God. If you go into a football match or a football or a soccer game, you will see men, grown men, worshipping their football team, singing chants. Everyone worships something, whether it be the God of success, the God of pleasure, the God of money, the God of self, every single one of us worships something. And I want to ask you, are you worshipping Jesus Christ or are you serving yourself? Okay, the third and actually the most powerful thing that Meatloaf once sung was this. He said, the Lord, he loves everybody. But is that true? Does God love everybody? Well, let's listen to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So, does God love everybody? Of course he does. Just look at the cross. Look at the great lengths that Christ went to to show you how much he loved you. If Christ didn't love people, why would he have his beard plucked out? Why would he have a crown of thorns smashed into his skull? Why would he have nails driven through his hands and his feet? Why would he be stripped naked, mocked, beaten, clothed only in spittle, dust and blood? Why would he do all of that if he didn't love you? He did that because he died there so that you might might be forgiven so that you might have a chance to be saved if you will put your trust in him. You see, you and I have a great debt. There are so many sins that we don't even know about that we've committed. Our lies, our blasphemy, our wicked thoughts, all the wrong things we have done deserve to be punished. And on the cross, Jesus Christ took the weight of our sin and he suffered total agony there so that we might be forgiven. He died there so that you might have life and so that you might not have to go to hell. I hope this doesn't sound arrogant, but I know 100% that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Why do I have a hope in that? I don't have a hope in myself, in any righteousness, in any goodness of myself. I've got a terrible track record. I am a sinner. The man looking at you has no goodness in him, but I have a hope in Jesus Christ. I have believed in him. And I want to tell you, if you put your trust in him, you can have a hope. You can know for sure that you are going to heaven. Guys, if any of you died and then three days later came back from the dead, I would listen so carefully to what you have to say. And that's why we need to listen to the Lord Jesus Christ when he says, whoever believes on me, I will raise them up on the last day. You see, we have a grave that is waiting for us, but Jesus Christ is in the business of emptying graves. Meatloaf's fate is sealed and only God knows where he is right now. But what about you? You right now have an opportunity. Your heart is beating, there is breath in your lungs. You have an opportunity to turn from your sins and to turn to Christ. And I've got to ask you, will you do it? Will you stop worshipping all of the gods of this world, the gods of wealth, money, self, pleasure, sin? And will you start worshipping the saviour of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you've heard of the actress Megan Fox. Well, she sort of made a similar claim to Meatloaf where she said she went to hell and came back. If you'd like to hear about that, click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. We'd love your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries. God bless you all and thank you for watching.